Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to the Fly Mines. Today we're going to be tying the Chum Baby. This is a fly that's been developed for Sea Run Cutthroat Trout. And this one was designed by a fly fishing guide named Bob Triggs. And he hails from the Olympic Peninsula. So this is a nice, fairly small pattern. And uh, he ties these down all the way into say like a number 14 or a 12 uh, a very small fly as far as salt waters go and if you want to get into flies that size with some good salt water hooks you'd be looking at the gamakatsu ss15 and that range does go down but a lot of the other hook manufacturers you might be lucky to find hooks down to a size 8 and possibly a 10. All right, don't forget to leave a comment down below and I'm gonna make sure to get you entered into our next draw for some decals and the flies that I've been tying so far. Now we're going to get a fresh hook in the vise. First I want to put a bead on this hook. So I'm going to be using a 4.6 millimeter brass bead in a copper color. And the hook I'm using today is a Mustad signature. This is the C70 SNP-DT. Uh, but I, like I said in the introduction, if you want smaller sizes, you'll probably need to move to something like the Gamagatsu uh, SS15. I'm going to be using a 70D olive brown thread and we'll get started. Just uh, put some thread on, start wrapping right behind the bead. And we're just going to put a layer of thread on down to the bend of the hook. Now I'm using a darker thread because this is going to show through the pearl mylar a little bit. If you'd like to go ahead and tie this fly with a bit of a, a lighter body on it, uh, a lighter variation, you can go ahead and use a lighter thread like a, a yellow light olive or even a white if you want. So we're going to take a few strands of pearl flashaboo. I'm going to use about uh, five or six here and we'll just trim off the ends and get those squared and then we'll tie those in along the hook shank directly behind the bead and then we'll just secure those down with thread wraps again to the bend of the hook. You can also use some different colored mylar or flashaboo here if you want to change up the pattern a little. And we're going to wrap those strands. We're just going to grab them all together and we're going to wrap them up the hook shank. And we want to make sure that we get a full cover on the hook shank and give this fly a nice body. We'll catch that directly behind the bead and we want to make sure we go on both sides of the flash just to make sure that it's really locked into place and when we're satisfied we'll give that a clip with our scissors so one thing i'm going to do here is just to add a little bit of durability to the body is put a uv coating on here so i'm just going to use a little bit of bone dry uh, if you don't have bone dry, you can go ahead and use a regular head cement. And if you're going to do that, I would recommend tying the fly in stages. So you might want to uh, tie up to this stage and then set it aside and let it cure for an hour or two before you go ahead and add the wing. So just curing that, making sure that body is all hard. And next we're going to take a little bit of pearl crystal flash and I'm going to take two strands. I could take one and fold it in half and that's plenty for this fly but we're just going to take two to kind of keep things simple. I'm going to measure the uh, flash about a hook shank length. We don't want it too too long. And that's kind of going to kind of gauge how long our, our fly wing is all together. We'll just get that set into place and make any adjustments we need to. And then we're going to pull the 
flash over to the other side of the hook. And I want to try and make sure that I kind of tie this on along the side and not necessarily on top of the shank because I want this to show underneath the wing that we're going to add. We're going to add a wing of gray squirrel. If you don't have gray squirrel but you have red or something like that, feel free to go ahead and use that in its place. We're going to take a small amount. We don't want to dress it too, too heavily. And we'll just clip that at the base. And we'll want to go ahead and clear out a little bit of the fluff. There's not a whole lot on a squirrel tail usually. So you just want to grab near the tip and then pull out any loose fibers. Then we're going to measure that about the same length as our flash. And then we'll clip the butts flush. And we'll tie those in right behind the bead. We'll just give a couple loose wraps just to make sure that it's uh, where we want it. And then when we're satisfied with the way it looks, we'll go ahead and add a few more thread wraps there just to really secure it. The squirrel tail can be a little bit slippery, so you want to make sure you put a few hard wraps in there at some point just to make sure that it's really bound down tight. And one thing I've been doing with this pattern is just adding a little bit of head cement just to soak into the thread wraps here. And that'll give uh, me a little bit more peace of mind and give the fly a little bit more durability. So we're almost done this pattern. We just got one more material to add and that's going to be a little bit of peacock hurl. So we're going to take our peacock eye and we're going to rip three hurls off there. We're just going to line those up and trim the butt ends off and then we'll tie those in by the butt end. You don't want to tie them in by the tips because that's where the hurls are the weakest. And we're just going to wrap those and we want to try and make those hurls stand out a little bit as we wrap it. And we're just going to fill in that gap between the wing and the bead. And we'll make sure that we go on both sides of the peacock hurl just so that it's secured nicely. And when we're good with that, we'll trim the tips. We'll grab our whip finish tool here just to finish off the fly. And I always like to give two whip finishes for all the flies that I tie. And uh, even for the ones that I tie for clients, I'm usually going to put two whip finish knots on those just to kind of aid in the durability. Last thing you want is for that fly to come undone. And our last bit of durability here is just to add a little bit of head cement. We're just going to set that in between the bead and the peacock hurl and we'll let that soak into the threads. Now you might also want to tie this without the bead and that's fine. You're going to be fishing the beadless version near the surface where a lot of wounded fish would be. And of course the beaded version, you're going to be able to fish that down a little deeper. Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.